Hey, it's Drybear, and today we'll be kicking off my weapon guide series for Wild Hearts as we finish most of the other guides, beginner's guides, and other details. And we'll start with one of my favorite weapons so far is going to be the bow. We'll go through how to use it, basic combos, function, and how to abuse it against certain monsters, and everything in between. If you found value in this video, please leave a like down below, as well as subscribe if you're looking for more gaming content. And as always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear, come by and say hi. So let's jump into using the bow. This is a super flexible, highly versatile weapon that has crazy burst damage and a lot of ways that you can punish body parts on kimonos that you're going up against and ways you can utilize it in effective multiplayer as well. A quick reminder before we start, I'll mention this for all my weapon guides, but you can go up to any of the training bears and activate L2 or whatever platform you're on for training and you can start the training and, create and add attack tutorials on. This will give you a way to do a training dummy, it'll track your damage, and it'll also give you a basic rundown of all of the combos. So if you're starting a new weapon, whether it's bow or anything else, you can just walk up, hit training, and activate it. There's a bear inside of Minato. There's also a bear that is default spawned in the first zone, and you can also use Dragon Karakuri to create your own bear wherever it is that you want in the world. So let's get started. The bow functions just like a bow would. You bring it out and you have your firing state. So when you activate, I'm just going to use PS4 controls because that's the controller I'm using. I am on P uh, PC, but if you are looking for the controls, you can just translate that over. So you bring out your bow and you have two states to fire the bow. The first one is going to be when your bow is vertical like this. So you fire repetitive actions there. And this serves a very important purpose, and that is to detonate arrows you've placed in the world. So you have this normal shot. You can also charge it up and release it. It has default state, yellow state, and red state. And each of those does more damage. So if you do uh, on this bear here, we can see I'm going to shoot once with a basic shot, and you can see that it does about 51 damage. If I charge it up and it hits yellow, it does a little bit more. And if I charge it up by holding down the fire button and does red, it does even more on top of that, which is pretty cool. So that's kind of the basic fire. Now, if you press square or whatever it is on your platform, it'll swap both stances to a different stance. So you normally have your vertical as your first stance. You can swap it over to horizontal. So if the first stance detonates arrows that have been placed in the world, you can guess that the second stance places those arrows in the world. So when you're horizontal and you fire, you'll see that when you shoot the target, you'll have this marker that hits the target and has this really big glow that comes out of it. You see that arrow sticking out of them? That is gonna be an arrow that can be detonated. So you activate this with the horizontal and every time you fire normally, you'll add shots. And if you do a hit chain, you'll shoot one, two, and then three arrows. And you can stack these up as much as you want. They have a really decent duration. They will time out after a while, but you can kind of spend some time adding these up on the spots you want for the kimono and then ultimately detonate them. So as you have these set up, you switch over. Now, if you shoot normally, it won't detonate. It needs to be a charged state of your vertical bow. So either the yellow shot here will detonate or the double red shot will detonate as well. So that's kind of your basic gameplay. It's not your combos, but it's your basic gameplay. You're setting up these arrows that can be detonated, place them into the target, and then you can switch over and any uh, charge state of the main bow, the vertical bow, will detonate them. Now, you have other ways to apply these that are far better, and that is going to be your triangle button on PS4, and that is their boast bolstered bow. So when you switch to the main vertical and you have this one yellow and then red, you can actually activate this before you fire by bolstering the bow. So if you press bolster once, it'll turn into the first state, and you bolster again, it'll turn into the second state, but you can see how now my bow is charged without he, me having to hold it at all. And this will actually activate unique abilities for whatever state that you're in. And while you have the charge, you can freely switch between the two stances, vertical or horizontal. So let's go ahead and go through each of these as you set up. Your basic combo is going to be utilizing the first charge state on your horizontal, because obviously you want to be setting up the explosive bolts ahead of time. So your bread and butter is going to be charging or bolstering your bow once in horizontal and then uh, activating and holding down the button. And you can see that for most of your stamina, you end up draining and shooting a whole bunch of bows, uh, arrows into the target that will stack up and hit. And you can do this multiple times. You can activate bolster one, shoot. If you're moving, you can cancel it, activate bolster one, shoot again. And then you have this, cr look at look, just crazy amount 
of landmines that are ready to blow up, and then you can activate your vertical and pop them for crazy amounts of damage. So that's kind of your first charge state, which is you'll be using it most often because it is the most reliable. You can charge the bow twice, and this will give a second bolster to this. And this turns into, rather than a forward spam, it turns into a volley. Now, there's a couple mechanics to know about with this. It is a little finicky because it utilizes a directional slider, almost like a trombone on your aiming. So when you activate this in double bolster, you see how this ground target appears and you can move that and it'll have these raining arrows to shoot down. This one will utilize all your stamina as long as you hold, but it is a little bit wonky. It's hard to show on the bear because he's kind of small, but on, uh, you know, like King Tusks or the, the Frozen Tusks that are super large, you can get very easy shots that add up a lot. And I found that there's some ways you can kind of cheat it a little bit. So if you get really close and activate it, uh, you can actually shoot them as it goes up rather than as it comes down, which means that you can get all of these to land. And then obviously you can go and you can blow that up and then boom, you got a crap load of damage that blows up on top of them. So if you really need to, you can use that um, and uh, get some really good damage on it, depending on where the target is. You can also kind of flatten it out a little bit as well. If you put it at max range, it'll shoot hor uh, horizontal. And if you shoot it really close, it'll come down. It is nice for on the big creatures that have breakable backs on top to rain down on top of them. And then you can switch to your vertical and detonate to do a whole bunch of damage. But just be aware that that is there. So those are the two charge states for the horizontal bow. Uh, you can do the same thing. You can bolster the bow for the vertical as well. And this one is not going to be your most common, but it is your most damaging output. So you want to be doing this as often as you can. Depending on the difficulty of the kimono you're fighting, you'll have to kind of pick and choose when you do it. But if you bolster the bow, and remember you can swap in between states as much as you want, you bolster the bow, you go vertical. When it's normal bolster, you'll get this kind of like plant and fire, does a good amount of damage and does detonate the arrows. But your best option is to do the double detonate. So when you double uh, bolster and you detonate, you plant, pull, and fire. And you want to pay attention to the size of this arrow. The reason this double bolster is your best option is because not only is the, the, the projectile itself massive, but it also penetrates as well. So if you can actually get on any kimono you're fighting, you double bolster and you activate this, you'll be able to detonate almost all of the arrows inside them because not only will this huge projectile be moving through the target, activating and triggering all of the arrows you have inside of them, but it'll also be penetrating going down the length of them and getting all the explosions as well. Whereas if you were to say, you kind of put a whole bunch of them all over the place here, sometimes you'll miss them depending on the size of the target. So if you just do like a light shot there, uh, they, can, they can ripple and explode each other, but it is your best option for damage. So your core of like, this is your core gameplay, single bolster on the horizontal. You can dodge while doing this as well. Get as many detonatable shots into the target that you can. Switch over to your main double bolster when you have a chance and then shoot straight through them, boom, it blows them all up. You get tons of damage on top of that. Super cool, super nice. We like that a lot, and it does ridiculous damage. You can do insane, insane burst. Now, you've probably already guessed that the name of the game for the bow is going to be Stamina Management, because obviously you can, you can switch to horizontal, you can do some extra bolstering here, and you can end up just dumping a whole, like your entire bar of stamina, uh, waste it all, and then get stuck, and then you can't roll when a target comes towards you. You just run low on stamina and you want to be able to build that back up. So you do want to be careful of your management. That's why I recommend doing a single bolster because you can walk while doing this and you can get some extra shots there. It still leaves you room to dodge if you need to get that motion going. And by the way, you can actually in the horizontal stance, you can dodge. If you hold down the button and you keep holding it down after the chart or after your dodge, it'll keep firing. So you can maintain it. It's just very uh, heavy on stamina consumption. So you'll be using through that. But there will be situations where you may not want to uh, use the extra global to swap between your vertical and horizontal stances. And so that's where your Karakuri come in handy, because regardless of what stance you're in, depending on the Karakuri you interact with, it will cause a different effect. So for example, if you put down a spring trap, you jump forward, and then you go forward and shoot, this will always fire five explosive bolts onto the target. So even if I switch to vertical and I jump out, jump out, fire, shoot, it still does explosive, even though technically right now I am in my vertical bow stance. 
So when you're trying to detonate, you need a little bit more or you see an opportunity to punish. You want to use this dash here. It does have some crazy mobility on it. So you'll move around, but you can still do that. The same is true for your box Karakuri. These will always detonate. So I can be in my horizontal stance. I can jump up and I can fire and this will detonate the explosives that are there and you'll get some nice damage off of that. So one of the safest ways to play is to do a single bolster on your horizontal stance, get as many shots in there as you can, switch out, do a, uh, a box Karakuri. So you go up into the air and then you can detonate that safely. Uh, you still have a high amount of stamina when you land and you can kind of fight and do that. It keeps you flexible as you get more comfortable with working in higher damage combos using the bow. You can also get aerial effects using the, uh, the impalers here, the spikes. You can have these do the same thing um, and you can get some motion off them. So you can actually, if you need to, you can place down these, impale, jump up, get vertical, and then use the aerial shot for that. And you can actually, if they stay inside, you can use them for vertical. And you also have the uh, floating Karakuri that can give you some really cool combos. Now, one thing to keep in mind that uh, Karakuris make the big difference here is when you go off a Karakuri and you do your combo and you land, you'll notice something different about me when I land. So when I shoot and I fire and I do that combo, assume I don't land back on it. If I do the spring box trap here, I jump forward and I fire. You'll notice that when I land, my bow actually has a charge on it. So you can actually use these to bridge the gap without having to bolster your bow at all. You can switch the state there, go forward, get a shot, land, and then go immediately into your side shot here to get some extra bow shots in there. Use the Karakuri of this to detonate the shots that you have, land, get a charge, and then go straight back into it as well. So some really cool combos you can use with a Karakuri, and I would recommend just using that as fillers when you need position. Say the target's coming towards you, you have to go to the side, go forward, swap, land, fire off, get the extra bits there, go up in the air to detonate, or you can use the floating Karakuri to get some aerial shots and trigger for detonates. Now let's talk about some general usage on the fusion Karakuris, because those make a big difference for you. Because you're so combo dependent, you can actually line up your punish windows really easily compared to other weapons in the game. So obviously you can be using these to just fill up tons and tons of explosives. Once you're happy with how many bolts there are sticking out of the monster, you can use things like the firework, the chain trap. You can have them get stuck on a bomb. You can even uh, blind them out of the sky. And once they land down on the ground, then you can very easily set up a double charge into your vertical stance and detonate all of that. You can even use pounders when they land as well. So very easy to deal with that. And it also, because you have deployables, unlike other monster hunting games, you can use those to your advantage as a ranged class as well. So any any smaller kimono, like the, the tail rats and things like that, you can use the basic boxes to stand behind and they'll run into them and stop. But for the bigger kimono, you'll have to use things like the bulwark, which is kind of a standard uh, setup for you. So you use this by using six of the boxes in a row. It creates the bulwark and you can actually climb up on top of this and stand on it. And once you're on it, this is your vertical post. If the bulwark isn't damaged and they charge into it, they'll get knocked down and fall. If it's a basic regular attack for them, they'll bounce off of the bulwark. So if you stand back a little bit, depending on the Kimono you're fighting, you can use this as a post to just kind of slam and do shots on top of the target. If they ever do a combo on you where they try to get some really big damage on you, you can just use it to bounce off and punish, jump down, throw out a quick pounder, get some bam bam on top of them, big, big damage. Uh, and then combo with your explosion as well. Really, really cool combos you can do with the bow, and it's super flexible on top of that. So I'd recommend running traits that give you high stamina regeneration and just focus on using your bolster states and your Karakuri. But that is a basic uh, guide for the bow and how to use it in Wild Hearts. Definitely one of the more favorable weapons, and when you use it properly, it gives you a ton of flexibility with ridiculous damage. If there's other guides you're looking for for Wild Hearts, let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll see me live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Come by and say hi. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>